the mistakes, the heartaches, the setbacks. As long as you are walking this earth, you will go through these challenges. Don't accept the faults. Don't give yourself the benefit of the doubt. You've got to be your own harshest critic and hold the line. All right, it's like when you're young and they see you, and it's like even when you start out doing what you're doing, you could be talented, right? But that doesn't mean that it's over. It doesn't mean that you give up. It doesn't mean that you quit. It means that you got to thicken up that skin a little bit. It means you got to be able to walk through fire without having a fear of being burned. It's gonna get a little warm. You're gonna feel the heat, but you got to be cool. You got to calm your storm. You got to weather the storm and know that your purpose in this world is meaningful. Figure at least this way I'll see what I'm going to hit. Pull forward. This is what I mean. Reggie Jackson struck out 2,600 times in his career, the most in the history of baseball. But you don't hear about the strikeouts. People remember the home runs. Fall forward. Thomas Edison conducted 1,000 failed experiments. You know that, right? Because the 1,001st was the light bulb. Fall forward. Every failed experiment is one step closer to success. You've got to take risks, and I'm sure you've probably heard that before, but I want to talk to you about why that's so important. I got three reasons. First, you will fail at some point in your life. Accept it. You will lose. You will embarrass yourself. You will suck at something. There's no doubt about it. The time that you have in this world is so precious. Let the world know that you matter. Believe in every step that you take. And if you stumble and fall, remember the ground will never apologize to you. So get up, carry on, and understand and know that your work is not done yet. Recognize your truth. Be productive. Be powerful, and from the bottom of my heart, conduct your business. I'm telling you, embrace it, because it's inevitable, and I should know. In the acting business, you fail all the time. Early on in my career, I auditioned for a part in the Broadway musical. Perfect role for me, I thought, except for the fact that I can't sing. So. I'm, I'm in the wings, I'm about to go on stage, but the guy in front of me, he's singing like, like, like Pavarotti. So they say, oh, thank you very much, thank you very much, and you will, we'll, you'll be hearing from us. I didn't get the job. But here's the thing, I didn't quit. I didn't fall back. But I continued to fail, and fail, and fail. But it didn't matter, because you know what? There's an old saying, you hang around the barbershop long enough, sooner or later you're going to get a haircut. And then you start thinking about what do your friends and family think? What do they see? What do they hear? And so the question becomes, how well do you represent yourself? What shortfalls do you have? Now, when you first start looking, it's like you're looking at an overgrown lawn. There are some big, obvious problems. So you do a broad, just kind of general cut of the grass. You fix some of the big, easy problems that are obvious. But once you've done that, once you've gotten rid of some of those big, obvious problems, you notice some more detailed problems so then you handle them and once you've got those handled you see even smaller and more detailed issues so you start trying to fix them and so family is something that's very important right to be honest i don't think a person you know how 
a lot of times we consider someone to be great, right? So that guy's great, right? Like for me, the true measure of greatness is if you can reproduce it in your family, like with your children, right? If one day your children come up and they're great, not great in athletic ability, no, great people. I think, uh, man, I think the greatest gifts in life and it's belief and exposure, right? Because a lot of times, for me personally, the reason I say that is, there was a lot of moments in my life to where it was people that saw things in me that I couldn't see in myself. And they believed in me in a way that I couldn't believe in myself yet. And I rented their level of belief until I got strong enough to possess my own. And that's what you do with yourself. You continually detach and then you look and then you refine and then you detach and then you look and then you refine and then you detach and then you look and then you refine. That's what you do. That's how you get better. And that process doesn't stop. It can't stop because if you stop refining, then then the weeds grow back and the next thing you know, you can't see yourself anymore. And when you can't see yourself anymore, when you stop looking at you, yourself, then you accept, you accept anything. And that's wrong. And somebody older than you or more experienced than you can see you and know like, oh man, if he did this, or if he does this, and he could be great, right? And they can come to you and say, hey kid, man, you got something. Like, you could be great, right? Like my teachers and my coaches, when they came to me and they was like, son, I'm telling you, like you can go to college, man. Like you really, I know you're talking about it, but your circumstances are saying different. I think you can do it, right? And when they said it, I'm like, oh, I can, I can do it. Like I can make it happen because they're believing in me making it happen. I think I can do it. So I think belief, and the reason I say exposure is because like I think when you show people things, that's powerful. I think exposure sparks inspiration. Right? Exposure sparks motivation. Like when I was coming up in that two bedroom house with all those people and I went to the other side of town with my coach and he was like, oh, people don't, you don't have to live like that. You can live a normal life. I say this to people all the time. Most important here is it isn't me, it's you. And sure, you may have grabbed some little foothold from the podcast or from one of the books, but it isn't me that changes you. It's you. You set the small goals. You achieve those goals. Then set some more and achieve those and set some more goals, maybe a little bit bigger, but not that much bigger. Just start. Start small. Start with changing tomorrow morning, just tomorrow morning. Get that squared away and then move on to the next day and the next and move your life to a better place. One little step 